Hello, my name is Thera Hawkins, owner of Auto Alternative. I want to talk to you today about timing belts. Here I have a mock-up of a timing belt, how it's arranged. Right here is your cam gear. Down here is your crank gear. We have a water pump, timing belt tensioner, timing belt idlers. The job of your timing belt is to keep your cam and your crank in time together to have a controlled explosion. The more controlled that we can have that explosion within your engine, the, more, the better your gas mileage is, the better your engine runs, the more power you have. This here, if I turn this, you can see how all this turns and works together. Your tensioner keeps the tension on your belt, drives your water pump, which we, when we do a timing belt, most of the time we recommend you doing that as a maintenance. If you're planning on keeping the vehicle, more than likely that water pump may go out at some point. Right here, I have an engine that has met its end, and we got this partly disassembled. Here's your crankshaft. You can see how when this turns, your pistons are attached to this right here and go up and down and come back and go up. That's going on right here inside your engine. This is your cylinder head. This is your cam gear right here. And inside here, we got your valves. You can see right here, these valves are open. These valves are all closed and nice and smooth and, and hold in all your compression when your piston comes up. And what happens is, these things are going up and down. This piston is going up and down towards your valves. And you think about your RPM gauge on your car. That's sitting at 1,000 RPMs or, or 750 when you're at idle. That's 750 times a minute this piston's going up and down. You think about when you're cruising down the highway or when you're accelerating, this is doing that 5,000 times in a minute. Well, when that belt breaks, things can go very awry in here. And if you have an interference motor, this piston can come up and actually contact these valves, bending the valves, creating a tremendous amount of engine damage in an interference motor. Some motors are interference, which means that the valves can contact the pistons if they come out of time. Some are what they call freewheeling, which means that no damage will be done when the belt is broken, but your car will not go anywhere. So what you want to do is check your service manual, replace your belt when it's recommended so that you're not sitting on the side of the road or do major engine damage to your engine. Most of the recommendations are somewhere between 90 to 105,000 miles, depending on manufacturer. Some are as low as 60,000 miles, depending on how you use your vehicle. In some extreme conditions, 60,000 miles um, is recommended on um, even the 105,000 mile normal recommendations. So check your manual, see when it's supposed to be done. I'd much rather do maintenance for you than have to do major engine repairs. It's easier for me and less expensive for you.